Hello all developers welcome back once again I am Nikhil from India and in this video tutorial we gonna explore about client scripts so let's proceed without wasting our precious time. Client scripts executes in a client browser on the basis of user interactions on the form and especially used for form validations. There are four types of client script on sale edit client script on change client script on submit client script and on load client script so let's see one by one by going to practical examples let's begin with on sale edit client script it executes when you change the specific field of the particular record in the list view so there are five parameters in the on sale edit client script function sys ids it will return the sys id of all those records that you will update table it will return you the table in which client script is being applied old values it will return you an old values that is before changing of the field values new value it will return you the new value that is after changing field values callback the function which is used to decide to update the value or not by passing boolean value and the use case here is that I want only the assignment group members to be allowed for updating an incident state in the list view. And there is one limitation if you are updating more than one record, then you should be the member of all those records, then only it should allow, but not just for one record. On the basis of this use case, I am going to create on sale edit client script. To create uh, the client script, let's go to the platform from the application navigator. If you will type client script and under the system definition, you could see client scripts. Let's click on that. Now we have to create the new client script. So I am going to click this new button from here. So uh, here I will give a name hello assignment group member to edit okay and talking about other fields here this application means which scope you are creating your client script so currently I am creating in the global scope so by default it has selected global and the active means this client script is ready for execution if I will uncheck this means okay we have this client script record but it is not ready for execution and this inherited means if we check this checkbox then this client script will be executed for child tables of this particular table global if i will click then it will ask for to view means only for the particular view it will execute this client script so based on our use cases based on the use case i am going to select incident table and the ui type currently we are going to execute on desktop only so let's keep as it is and the type will be on sale edit okay and the description you can mention about uh, your client script so I will go here and I will copy this so that next developer can easily understand why have you created this particular client script and the messages is nothing but from here let me type messages so under the system UI you could see messages you can create a record in this is UI message table and 
based on the login user languages uh, right now we have only this english language is available uh, you have to enable plugin for different different languages so based on the login user for the same key you can show the different languages messages for that you have to create the record in this CCUI message table and that you can use here in your client script but before that you have to mention the key let's suppose abc underscore message and to use here you have to call this get message method and inside you have to pass this abc message key we'll see about this also so let me save this client script so the question here is that when i will update the state field of more than one table to identify those table records we have this is ids so what i can do here i can store that sys ids in one variable record ids next important thing is that we can't write glide record query here to identify that if i am the member of assignment group of those records or not so we have to create script include and that will be a client callable and by using the glide ajax api we can call that script include and easily we can identify so let me create a script include from the application navigator so if you type script include you could see the script includes under the system definitions So let's uh, create the new script include and the name I am going to give is my incident util and so I want this script include to be called from client side for that you have to check this client callable checkbox and let's save it so it is asking for the role so i am going to give the itil role means the user who will have this itil role for that user this script we include will be executed and if i will scroll down below you could see the acls which are created for this script include so i will click, click member of assignment click member of assign uh, okay assignment group this is the function which i am going to create so first thing here i don't know the answer for that we will create one variable flag and i will say false means i don't know the answer at this point after that i'll create one variable to initialize sys ids of the records which i am going to update 
आईडी इस एंड दिस इस आईडी टू दिस फंक्शन वी विल पास थ्रू दी गाइड एजेक्स इन दैट केस वी हैव टू एक्सेस यूजिंग दिस ऑब्जेक्ट बाय कॉलिंग दिस मेथड दिस डॉट गेट पैरामीटर इनसाइड दैट वी हैव टू मेंशन दी पैरामीटर नेम आईडी इज आफ्टर दैट वांस यू विल गेट दिस इज आईडीज वी कैन राइट द गाइड रिकॉर्ड फॉर द इंसिडेंट टेबल push that what i will do I will write this line to add the filter this id in plus this id because when i will receive this is id it will be like this id 1 ID two and in means a one of uh, this is ID and I'll say I'll ask the database to look for these records by using this query method and as many records I will receive. Here dot next then I will check if I am the member of assignment group of that particular record or not. to do that we have uh, this method so gs it glide system object get user will return you the user object and there is another method is member of and here you can pass either the group name or group id so gr dot assignment group dot to string because this is the reference field it will return you the sys id of the assignment group okay and another thing is that uh, okay the next Thing we have to check if the login user get user ID. If the login user ID is same as assigned to user. Gr dot assigned to dot to string. So I have written in our condition. the this condition will match then it will return the true value or the this condition will match then it will return the true value if both will not match then this flag will be false only so let me wrap uh, this statement into this packet so here i will see if not flag If this condition will not match, what I will do? I will return directly by saying no. Why? Let's go here. If you notice about the limitation, if you are updating more than one record, then you should be the member of all those records. Then only it should allow. but not just for one record that is the reason why here if any for any of the record if it will fail for any of the record then i will directly return no 
by saying no you can't edit else here i will check the flag if it is true then i will say yes you have access to edit else return no means you don't have access to edit that particular field okay let me save it okay let's go to our client scripts so here let me uh plot or uh, let me console uh, log the record id first record ids and save it now i will go to the incident list and i will open the developer tools so where is the state field uh, okay console so what i will do i will try to update the state for these two records and i will say uh, on hold uh the reason it hasn't execute because we haven't select the field because that is the most important thing here then only this cell edit is can script will run let me update this again uh new okay so you could see uh we got the array right okay now we can convert that array into string so it will be like this id One comma id and this square bracket will be removed. That is the reason why I converted it into the string. Next, I will write the glide index new. And in this, we have to pass the script include name. and the best practice is uh, always pass this api name or not uh, just this name if it is in the same scope then it is okay but always prefer to pass this api name after that you have to call this method by saying that i want to call which function is arm underscore name and the function name the function which we will use uh, in this script include is this one pick members of assignment group okay next and i will say false here i 
have to pass the another parameter underscore and id is okay means i have to pass this record ids okay next dot get xml answer and inside this we have to you can either pass the function name or you can directly write like this this is the callback function in which you will get the response and this is asynchronous means this function will register this function but this function will not execute immediately it will execute once the response will come back from the server side and when i will get the response from server side then only i will call this callback method okay by saying that okay you can update okay you cannot update okay uh, for now what i will do uh, first i will okay the false value here you could see save and close is false okay first i will check uh, the response so i will log in the developer tools let me save it now I'll again go to this list and I'll refresh this list and I will again try to update uh, this record to in progress let's see yes and it is saying that yes why let me open this incident record and the reason uh, let me open the assignment group you can see that i am the member of this assignment group okay let me try to update uh, uh, another record uh, just random record let me try to update this one i will update in twin progress no because I might not be the member of that group or I am not the assigned to user right this is uh, this record let me put my name here I am not sure I can give a name like this but uh, this assigned to is dependent on this assignment group that's fine so you can see that it is working so i'll go here and i'll say if response is yes then i will say okay let's allow to save and close by calling this method and before that i have to update this one right i have to update this variable by initializing the true value and i just initialize from here and i will call this method after this if condition else I'll say no. Oh, 
okay so if you understand uh, not only that if you want to uh, so some error messages then you can use if dot I'm not sure if we can show this error message also g form dot so uh, not the add error message and we can see like you can't update this field let me save it and this is the record let me refresh this list so let me update this state new to in progress so it allow me to save am i correct uh me check why let me log the response console dot log response again because it should not allow me to update yes okay how possible okay my bad i have initialized this assignment group value here set me remove the assignment group okay let me try again because i, I was the member of that group i am the member of that group let me update in progress so g form dot add error message is not a function so we can't use that so only then what will you you can use this alert and it will work so hope you understand how can we use home cell edit client script so friends right now i have written this message in the alert method directly but what if somebody ask you to update this message next time in this case instead of updating this script just for this message what you can do you can create ui message and i think i have to type messages and under the system ui you could see messages okay so what i will do uh, i will create one record in this ui message table 
and I will say that invalid update or I'll say not hello to update field. This is the key, right? And the message which I had written here, I will cut from here and I will go to this record and I will save it. Okay, now I will copy this key. And in this messages field, I have to mention so that it will fetch the message for you uh, before running the script and get message and pass the key name. Let's save it. Let's go to the list view again. Let me refresh. And I will try to update the state to in progress. You can't update this field. We'll say OK. Nice. So you could see it hasn't updated the state also. But is there is is there a better way to show the alert message? And the answer is yes. I have found one blog and which is in this David Magdad Pro and a very thankful to this guy who has created this site and mention these things here so i want to show the message so basically glide model it is calling the ui page and if i scroll down i will paste this uh, link in the description also if i scroll down below uh, for this alert message uh, we have this glide warning UI page and if you want to check I will copy this and go to the pages so you could see the glide one is the UI page name so I will go to our script and what I will do I will just copy uh, this I will copy this script from here and I will paste here so this is the UI page name and after let me scroll up see we have the UI page name and hide the close button means if you notice here we have a where is that we have this close button if you want to hide that then they are passing this true and this is the width I believe width in pixels okay and I don't uh, want this method on prompt complete 
and it will execute uh, once you click the OK. I don't want to call that event here. In the title, I could say that uh, uh, let's say that warning message. Okay. dot no no hit message and in this we have to pass the key name save it let's go to a list view So let me try to update the state in progress, right? Um, let, okay, you can see you can't update this field. Okay. And I like this. And it is pretty interactive also. And where is that? Okay, so there was alert message. That's why it was swinging, and I was wondering. So, if you like this trick, also. The second client script I am going to talk about is onload client script, which executes on form load. It has no parameters. In the use case I want only the knowledge base managers, owners, or an author of knowledge article can see the source task field. In KV knowledge table, we have the field called source task field. So that field I want to make visible for the knowledge base managers, owner, or an author of the knowledge article. So for that, let me go to the platform and let me open the knowledge article list so kv knowledge is the table okay and let me open one of the article from here let me open this one let me close all uh, this and see this is the article and we have the source task field and right now uh, the there is no value I want this field to be visible for the knowledge base owner managers or an author of uh, this article so in this case in the client script, I can't do the dot walk to access this uh, owner and manager's value. To access those values, either I have to use client ajax or I have to use get reference method of the glide form object. But I don't want to make uh, extra server call so I can achieve uh, these things using the display business rule because before onload client script display business rule executes and in that we can initialize the values into g underscore scratch pad object and that g is scratch pad object we can access in client script also now i am going to create a display business rule for uh, this kv knowledge table so from the application navigator i will type uh, business rule in the search box so 
under the system definition you could see business rules application just click on that it will show you the list of all those records which are created for particular table so let's create our new business rule so i will say uh, uh set up scratch pad object okay and i will select the table kv knowledge and check this advanced checkbox and here when do you want to run this business rule on display and that's all and the next if you want to select the roles you can select wait for a while now i will go to the advanced tab and here i will write our code to initialize the property into g scratch pads object what i will do g underscore scratch at dot av underscore managers and to access the kb managers we have the current code in that we have kv knowledge base field and in the kv knowledge base table we have managers field and i think the kb managers field dot to string so it return uh, the sys id of user records by uid1 like this uid2 okay next i will initialize g underscore scratch pad dot kv owner current dot kv knowledge base dot owner dot to string so it will also return the uid user id the two things from uh, this knowledge base that is owner and managers value okay now i will save now i will create the client script so from the application navigator type client script so let's create our client script and let's uh, close uh, this unnecessary tabs so i will give a name validate for source task field okay and the table will be kv underscore knowledge and the ui type let's select all 
and the client script type will be on load and let's save it so what we will do here I will allot that property g underscore scratch pad dot owner to make sure that our business rule is working. So I'll go to this record and I will refresh. So you could see the sys ID of the owner. Nice. So here I will initialize the owner value into this owner variable. And I will initialize the manager manager's value into another variable called managers. And let me copy from here. Uh, what I will do, I will uh, initialize a managers to this knowledge base let me open the record so i will add uh, some users world tutor and oh mm. John Adams okay two users I have added in the managers field of this knowledge base let me save it so let me alert for the managers also to verify let me go back in the knowledge record So you could see uh, the sys IDs of the managers. And the author. The author you can directly access from the form the form dot get value. It will return the author sys id of the knowledge article but uh, for this it is not returning the reason why that is not showing here and if i'll check the xml So you could see the author but in the form it is not showing reason whatever will be on the form that value will only display here using this g form but uh, if it is not that in the form then it will not show so i'll create another tv author current dot author 
the two string let me copy the kv author also okay next i will check the if i am the owner or not uid c underscore user dot user id okay so in this property there uh, in this object there are many properties that you can check just by user typing g user dot we have first name get client data get full name has role we have methods also and we have a simple property variable also So and it will return the login user ID. So here I will check if the login user is the owner. Okay. Or login user is the author. Or login user or managers dot index of okay this index of is the javascript method so uh, dot index of and it will return index number if it will find else it will return minus one here i will pass the uid and if it is greater than minus one then only So that a uh, source task field, and I'll say to else don't so. Else don't so that source task field, and. Let me save it. And if I'll go for now, you can able to see this source task field. Okay. And if I will refresh, and it is still showing the reason I am not the owner. I am not the owner. I am not the author and so let me put the alert yes no the no has executed but the source task field didn't remove from here maybe the backend name is different and that is source not the source task okay so this is the way you can debug No, it will hide. 
Now if I will refresh, it will hide as intended. But uh, let's suppose if I will add into the manager's field. If I will add myself into that manager fields here. And didn't add it or what? Let me click this one. Okay, now it has added. Save it. If I'll go here and if I will refresh, now I can see that source task field. So this is the way you can use. So let's discuss about on change client script which execute when we change the field value of the particular record on the form view and in the on change client script function there are five parameters the control parameter is the dhtml widget whose value has changed dhtml stands for as you can see dynamic hypertext markup language it is the field for which the client script is written by using that you can add styling update size or length of the field old value parameter will give you the old value that is before changing of the field value new value parameter will give you the new value of the particular field that is after changing of the field value is loading to verify if the form is loading and you can decide to execute on load by using this is loading flag and if you want to skip on on load by using this is loading flag you can skip your script to be executed and is template if you want to verify that is an user is submitting the form through template or not so by using each template parameter you can verify so in this I have this simple use case use case that is when I change the incident field in the incident task then the configuration item should be populated automatically and it should be same as incident record and incident info that will be the custom field should show auto updated content like this below that are caller name of the incident manager of the caller and incident sort description friends you might have the question that can't we use business rule to achieve this functionality and the answer is yes we can use the business rule also but what if the client want to see the changes in real time and most important thing is that client script executes on the basis of manual interactions of users and if the client want to see the changes on manual interactions then you have to go through client script only Let's create client script for incident task table till now we have seen that we are creating the client script from the application navigator but if you want to create the client script by navigating from the list view or the form view you can do that so what I will do I will go to the incident task records list and from here I'll open one record on this header I will right click and you could see configure under that we have client scripts by doing so it will automatically select the table and here you could able to see all those client scripts which are created for this incident task table and if you want to create new just click this new button and this way it has selected the well automatically and the name which I am going to give is set field values or I could say auto 
populate field values based on incident okay and the type this client script type will be on change and in the task table record we have this incident field means when i will change the incident record from here then that time it should be automatically populate this configuration item and other i said about the custom field but for now i am going to use this description only so the field name which we are going to use is incident and let me save it so as you could see there are five parameters as we have discussed just before so if you want to get the value from the reference record you can use gform dot get reference method but by using that you can able to access all those field values which are available on the form of that reference record yes i'm talking about this of uh, field values which were able to see on the form that value you can access and it is also not recommended but we can use the glide ajax by using that if the field values which are not appearing on the form that field value also you can access so what i will do i will create uh, the variable incident id and the incident id will get from this new value and if you don't want to execute your script at the time of form loading or if the value will be empty then keep this condition as it is okay the second we can take is that if the new value and old value is same then that time also we can skip and i would say it is good practice old value is same as new value then return from here don't execute anything after this okay so again i will go to my script include that i have created in my previous use case so and believe i can find from here script include which is this one my incident util so here will create a uh, the method call get incident info okay and for this method we will pass the incident id to the parameter so this dot Let me increase the size. Collapse these functions. Now, hope it is visible for you. This should get parameter. I'll say this param inc. Okay. 
after that from what all fields you want the value for that also fields for that also i will pass the parameter this dot get parameter param underscore fields and uh, by using this parameter we will pass the field name like this uh, let's suppose number comma description comma id like that so if we will receive the fields then i am going to convert that into array so here i will check if fields then fields dot to uh, dot split method by using that i will convert the string into array okay now i will write the client record in c gr and because we are receiving the incident id so we can add this filter equal to i'll concatenate that incident id variable here by saying that for this incident record fits the record for this in using this incident id fits the incident record to ask with the database we have to call this method query and if the database will return some result then we have to point that object by use by calling this next method post that here i will create and i will iterate this array i less than fields dot length plus plus and inside uh, this object the key name will push the field name so fields i and the value will be i n c this code g r dot get value and in this we have to pass the field names so one by one for each uh, field we can access by using this index i and by calling this method get value you will get the value and it will be like uh, this for example number uh, colon and whatever it is number okay for another field underscore description and it will be like this and after that here uh, I will check that if there is something in this obj 
to uh, verify that also I'll create one flag by saying false initially because I don't know if there will be values or not and under uh, this for loop will update that flag to and here I will check if flag means there will be some value so I will return see we have to return the string not the object in this case I have to convert that object into JSON stringify JSON dot stringify and object else I will return null okay so hope it is readable for you let me make it more readable so uh, let me save it so let's go to our client script okay now I have to call this method which is the part of this script include so I'll copy the API name new client ajax and add param the function which I have to call is this one get incident info and in this function as a parameter we have to pass the incident id See, the parameter should be same this key name and uh, this key name should be same then only you will get the value here and here we are passing incident id post that we have to pass from what all fields you want to fetch uh, the values so as we know that we need the values from uh, let me open this incident record in the new tab we want the value from caller and configuration item I believe and the backend name of the caller is caller id and the configuration item is cmdb underscore ci so caller underscore id comma cmdb underscore ci After that, I will call get XML answer method, and in this, I have to pass the callback function. Where in I will get the response from the server. But friends, as per the use case, we want caller ID name, caller ID manager. incident sort description 
and we have a configuration item the backend name is cmdb underscore cy according to this field names if i'll go to the script include here then inside this what i will do first i will split I will split this field name into array using this dot so variable field error after that fills i dot split and if I will directly write this dot it will not work in this case we have to use this backward slash two time to skip uh, this uh, kind of regex. Now it will split like this. In the array, you will get color ID and the another element which is the name. Okay. After that, I will check if field array dot length is greater than one or equal to equal to two. In this case, what I will do, I will copy the same thing here. and instead of writing like this as we know that we can access the record value by doing dot work also and by using this square bracket also so in the inside the square bracket we have to mention the backend field name the field name we are getting through uh, this fills array and because the element we will receive will be like this color underscore id dot name in this case we have to face the name of the color id on the wake of that what i have to write here is that field array zero that is the color id dot name the not name we will receive from the second element of the field array so here I will write it like this field array 1 and here I have to mention the get display value ok so what we will do will save it and I have this incident record for to test this use case I will refresh this form and I will change the incident number now you could see the alert color id dot name is able tutor and the cmdb ci is the reference field so we are getting the sys id of that record and the short description and the manager caller id is also the reference field but from that reference field record we are trying to access the name and the manager that are fields available in the user record table so we are getting this object json that we can convert into object and easily set into this configuration item and description field so let me go here and what i will do from here uh, for to set the value in the cmdvci first 
I will convert uh, this response into object by calling json dot parse method. After that, now I will set the value into ci configuration item field by using the form dot set value and the backend name is I believe cmdb underscore ci only ci and here say obj dot cmdb underscore ci g form dot set uh, value now we have to set the value into the description so in the description for that i will prepare a string here and first i will concatenate the color name like this and i'll say plus obj dot and uh, for to access that we have to write like this color id dot name and color manager name color id dot manager and after that incident short description and that we can directly access by doing dot work Now these things we have, I have to set into the description. So for that I will change the line after each sentence. So now I will set into the description field by using gform dot set value description and here is tr let me format this and let me see so let me copy the incident number again from here let me go to the task table record and let me refresh it let me change the incident number from here Okay, let me refresh this again okay, it is still loading uh, okay so it didn't work the reason why cmdb underscore ci description also it hasn't updated set value description okay <laughs> the json spelling was incorrect so let me test again let me change So you could see we are able to uh, set up the configuration item field and the description but here you could see uh, that means I have written the forward slash instead of backward slash. Again I have to copy this incident number. Now it will work. So let's verify again. Awesome, as you could see, we are successfully able to set up configuration item and description.
the last client script i am going to talk about is on submit client script and inside the function of the on submit client script has no parameters and use case we have if the walk start date greater than walk end date and if the walk end date greater than resolve date then it shouldn't allow to submit the incident form and it should show error messages when state is resolved on the wake of this i'll create the client script and before that i'll show you uh, those fields which i was talking about is this walk start walk end and the resolve and the backend name of the resolve field is resolved underscore at by using this backend name only we can fetch the value so i will create the on submit client script and the name here i am going to give like validate date before resolving okay and the type will be on submit let me save it let's fetch the values and store into some variables so walk start in this i will fetch the walk start date value by using the form dot get value method same for walk end and resolved the backend name of the resolve field is resolved underscore at after that what i will do i will create three different date object for walk start date and inside uh, this by calling one function get date from format based on the logged in user date format i will pass the value inside this date constructor so get date from format and here i'll pass the walk start and login user date time format to access that the user g underscore user underscore date underscore time underscore format okay let's do for the walk end date also w s e and walk end date post that resolve data and i'll say resolve okay let me format now i will check if work uh, whd is greater than w is e and i will show the error message using g form dot add error message and i'll show that walk is excel and what is the name of the field excel start excel start should be less than the excel end date right okay this is and then i 
I don't allow to submit. So from here I will directly return. Okay. Okay. If this condition will be passed, I will check for another. And this time I will check for this one. Walk end date and resolved date. So if W is walk start end date is greater than resolve date then i will say actual end date okay here should be less than resolve date that's all friend don't have to do anything do you think it will work no because we have to write here false only returning will not work because you are not saying whether you have to submit this form or not okay that's it oh let me save it let me validate my form first i have to refresh so i'll go down and i will add the actual start date like this it and the actual end date of december 5 and now i will try to save okay here you could see actual start date should be less than actual end date okay that's fine so actual start date should be less than actual end date okay so i will i have given three year now i will validate the resolved date the resolved date should be less than actual end i believe per our condition resolve date should be less than actual end but if i will uh, i will choose december 10 since we have uh, selected actual end 12 no no december 5 not the 12 let me try to save so it allow me to save uh, what i have written here walk start end date should be greater than this one if it will be like that then it will show actual date end date should be less than the result date and in our case it has pass but if i will choose four resolve date if i will try to save now you could say actual end date should be less than resolve date okay friend another condition i have to check for the state because i mentioned here when state is dissolved that time only it will validate dates right and for that you can check for the resolve value of the state which is 6 so here i will create variable state and to grab the value from the state field we call this method and here i will specify the field name and here i will check if it equal to six then only it should validate these dates okay what if The value inside the work start and result will be empty. In that case, I will check here if work start 
equal to this or what and okay i have to make it mandatory v form dot set set mandatory which will you want to make mandatory walk start date and i'll say true post that i will say return i'll add the error message g form dot dot uh, i think they said okay add error message please fill in actual start date okay i'm checking for this one only you can check for other work end and resolved field let me save it let me refresh the incident record no i will clear the value from the actual start and i will try to save so it allow me to save the form why let me check because the state is not resolved <laughs> okay okay it is asking for this okay let me try to save because of the order of another uh, client script it executed let me try to save it again please fill the actual start date and here i didn't write the false so hope you understand why i have written this false no it will not allow me to save uh, what i will do i have to change some value here i will change okay you could see please fill the actual start date okay like that we can validate for other we can validate for end date and see and it made this field mandatory okay that's all friend so hope you understand how can you use the on summit client script also and if you like this video please do subscribe and share then only i will upload more helpful and amazing video tutorials